Today we will. Oh, oh wait, there you are. Today we will be investigating the murder of Sirius A. This is Sirius B, who is not in the main sequence. You her, didn't you? He is the main suspect, and thus is being interrogated by detectives Hertzsprung and Russell. Stars, who is not gonna let us into that party? Hey, don't try to get ahead. Serious me? Why are you here? You're a white dwarf, not a main sequence star. To further investigate, the detectives will learn about stars. This is the Hertzsprung Russell diagram. Each point on the scatter graph represents a star, and thus we determine the stars temperature and luminosity with the x and y axes. This diagram was created about 100 years ago in 1910 by A. N. R. Hertzsprung and Henry Norris Russell. Not many changes have been made in its past 100 years. On the x axis we have the surface temperature of the stars and as you can see the numbers increase as you go left. Most graphs you see they, they go right, so just keep that in mind when you're plotting them. So on the y-axis we have the luminosity, and the sun, uh, the luminosity is 1, and yeah, it's logarithmic. So we do surface temperature because we can't see uh, what the temperature is like inside the star, so the farthest we can go is the surface. This band that extends from the top left to the bottom right is called the main sequence. Stars in the main sequence undergo nuclear fusion and nuclear fusion is basically the changing of hydrogen to helium. Though blue is assumed to be cold and red hot, it is actually the opposite situation with stars. Blue stars are considered to be the hottest Meanwhile, the red stars are the coolest, and yellow stars are in between. A majority of stars are red and eventually become white dwarfs. It's the same with yellow. Blue stars, however, are few and colossal in comparison. So, also, uh, along with the surface temperature on the x-axis, there's the, the stellar classification, and we usually designate them according to certain letters, and they're not in order like A, B, C, D, E, F, so it would be O, B, A, F, G, A. To remember this, you can just think of O, B, a fine guy or girl, this me, and you just remember like that. To remember this, you can just think of O, B, a fine guy or girl, this me. If you know which letter, which classification a star is in, then you can tell what the surface temperature is. Okay, so you may wonder what absolute magnitude is. So if you've ever heard of apparent magnitude, that's when you think that a certain object for example, a star is a certain luminosity, but you can't know for sure, so that's why we have absolute magnitude as opposed to apparent magnitude. And absolute magnitude is luminosity of a star at, from a standardized distance, so that would be 10 parsecs, which would be about 30 something light years away. So if you're observing from the Earth, so that would be the Earth, and you're here, and then there's a star, and then there's another star, which is far away. You can't really compare because they're not at the same distance. So you have to 
make them the same distance, and then you can clearly compare. And then that distance is the 30 something light years. She was murdered.